Hey everybody, welcome back to the Build Show Network. Guess what we're doing today? Ninja training with Steve Basic Architect. No, we're not doing that. This is my stick that I'm gonna use to point out something. Today we're gonna talk about not only the exterior air barrier, but continuity of the exterior air barrier. So, the zip sheathing, the R sheathing here, is what I consider our primary air barrier, right? This is the line between outside the structure and inside the structure, basically the condition space versus the environmental conditions of the outside. So the air barrier, the importance of it is in its continuity, not only its existence, but the ability to be continuous. So you have a lot of instances in a house where you might have a porch roof, you might have a screen in porch, you have something there that comes in contact with this. A lot of times you'll see those sections, they get cut up, chopped up, and the, the continuity of the air barrier is lost. Well, I take a lot of time in planning to help the builders and in the drawings understand that continuity is key. So as we look up here, we have our little truss roof to our porch, right? That's basically the overhang. But I think the important thing to understand here is, look at how the zip sheathing goes up and continues up above our roof system there, right? So what do we have here is basically air barrier continuity in that my primary air barrier, which is the green R sheathing of zip, it goes up and that this ledger is now nailed on the surface of the air barrier, right? It isn't, the air barrier doesn't stop here and then start again. The air barrier goes up and provides that continuous effort. And that continuous effort goes all around the building and then all the kind of secondary spaces, roofs, et cetera, get attached to that air barrier. So it's an extremely important part of any project. It's one that's quite often forgotten. Let's jump back to the studio. We'll get Big Red in hand. He's got a lot of work to do on this one because this is a really important aspect of any build. So I'll see you back at the studio. Hey, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that uh, little trip out to the job site there. Project is uh, looking really good. And uh, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, continuity. Continuity is key. <clears throat> it's especially key when you're talking about air barriers. So, without further ado, let's dive in. We got our good friend Big Red, and uh, we're gonna hit uh, hit some drawings. So let's have at it. All right, everybody. So first thing I'm gonna throw down here. You might be familiar with it. You might not, but it is Energy Stars. Thermal Bypass Checklist. So it ba basically outlines all the different places where the air barrier can be challenged. And there's places here for checking boxes where it's been verified by the builder, by the raider, uh, if there's corrections needed, blah, 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 blah. I'm not a big fan of checklists. So without further ado, I'm going to throw it away. The reason I'm going to throw it away is because as an architect, I created a graphic version of the thermal bypass checklist. So there's a whole bunch of areas that uh, get challenged by the air barrier. Um, this is a graphic that I developed for uh, I do a lot of speaking engagements, and uh, this is one I use when I'm talking about air barrier continuity, like we are today. So there's a whole bunch of places where we should be concerned about air barrier continuity. And the first thing is, is that when we talk about that is to build the box, right? And once you have the box, then add things to it. You saw it in the video there where the uh, green zip R sheathing provides continuity up beyond the ledger, beyond the roof frame. And the roof frame is merely attached to the green box. And the green box is 
our air barrier. So imagine this being that zip green box and we want to say add a screen and porch or some kind of exterior uh, unconditioned space to the side of that house. Well, we have these areas here where this external structure is going to be attached to the house. But what we need to do is make sure that this wall is intact before we frame that wall, right? So that wall gets attached after the fact, not during, right? When it comes to air barriers, you guys have heard me say it a million times, but we're going to say it again. When you have your air barrier, and in the case of the video there, and here, let's assume it is you know, the zip R sheathing. Well, you're either outside or you're inside. So you can't be in a gray area. There is no maybe. There is no kind of. You are either inside or you are outside. And, you know, this just shows a whole bunch of places. We have plumbing penetrations that go through our air barrier. We have skylights. We have top plates. We have soffits. To um, We have our attic access that penetrates our air barrier. We have our band joist areas, first floor, second floor. We have, you know, cantilevered or covered portions of the building that uh, are inset on the building. In, in this case here, soffits and cantilevers at doors, the doors themselves we have. One of the other bigger, bigger um, problems is this bonus room that people love to put over the garage. And you can see here, the problem with that is that we have an air barrier that we have to maintain between the house and the garage, right? Because the house is inside, the garage is what? Outside, you guessed it. Great guess, guys. But the upstairs versus the downstairs, again, the garage is outside, but the bonus room is inside. That's why you don't see that space there. But a lot of times this bonus room is kind of cape style. And the problem is, is you end up with these areas where this kind of attic space is confused in understanding is it outside or is it inside, right? Um, insulation baffles, all kinds of different areas here, but the things that really matter when it comes to an air barrier is continuity is key, right? That's the number one thing. Air barriers rely on continuity. There is no way around that. The more continuous we make it, the better our blower door numbers come become, the more energy efficient the house gets, as well as, you know, a lot of people think it is all about energy, but it isn't all about energy. If I can make my walls basically hermetically sealed, then I don't get anything moving across the walls uncontrollably, meaning I don't get air streams that moisture can jump on and deliver, you know, moisture laden air to cold surfaces that would then condense inside the wall and create problems. So the tighter I can get the house, it is solving for comfort, obviously, because we don't have those drafts, but it's also solving for health problems. It's solving for durability problems. And guess what? If I solve for these three, then I solve for energy efficiency. And I get that as a byproduct of 
these three good con these three good decisions, right? So continuity is key for a number of reasons. You can see there. The last thing that I'll leave you with, and only because I've said it a hundred times, and I've said it another ten here already, but ear barriers when you're dealing with them, it is this simple. You are either inside or you are outside. There is no maybe, there is no kind of, there is no gray area, there is no, it's sort of, you are either inside or you are outside. Those are the only conditions that exist in the world of air barriers. You're either in or you're out. So get out there. Let's fight air leakage with continuity and a clear understanding of we're inside or we're outside. It's that simple. All right, so Big Red is done. That means I'm done. Um, but before I go, let's talk about a few things. If you want more, you can find me on Instagram, Steve Basic Architect. I'm publishing stuff uh, daily, putting up stuff there to share and uh, talk about building science, architecture, all that good stuff. You can also find me on the Unbuilder podcast. Um, there I team up with my good friends uh, Jake Bruton and Peter Yost, and uh, we talk about everything. Building industry, from business to building assemblies, building science, all that great stuff. Years and years of experience um, at the wheel there. So, lastly, Build Show Network. You're here, but have you checked out well over, I mean, we're probably closing in on two years on some videos. And uh, my good friends, Matt, Jake, Brent, and uh, Wade. And then we have some additional um, contributors in Design Build Doug, uh, Detmore, Zach, Drywall Shorty, and Mechanical Hub, all turning out great videos. So um, remember, science says watch them seven times. So go back. I personally have, I don't know, over a year's worth of videos now. So. That's uh, one a week for over a year, so that's a lot of videos to go check out. But uh, go check them out. Great content, stuff we're doing every day, so it's all relevant. Enjoy, and uh, until next time, long live our buildings.